Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really cool differential equation. We have y double prime divided by y equals 4x squared plus 4x plus 6. Now, why do I call this differential equation very cool? There's a good reason behind it. Because notice that it's not y prime divided by y, it is the second derivative divided by y. So these equations are very special and I'll be talking about four different methods and there is actually a suggestion thanks to one of my viewers which I will uh, present uh, and that's uh, the fourth method. So I'll be presenting four methods even though they're not all going to be complete but I, at least I'll talk about the methods. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation from different perspectives. If you're ready, we can go ahead and get started. So first method. Now, when you have an equation like this, I'm dividing the second derivative by the original function. I'm thinking something like this. Maybe y is a polynomial. But what kind of polynomial can it be? Well, because the second derivative is going to reduce the degree by 2, maybe it is a quartic polynomial. So suppose y can be written as ax to the fourth power plus bx to the third plus cx squared plus dx plus e, where a, b, c, d, e are real constants. Now, if you differentiate this twice, first you're going to get 4ax cubed plus 3bx squared plus 2cx. If you differentiate one more time, you're going to get 12ax squared plus 6bx plus 2c, 2c or not 2c, that's the problem. And you're going to get the following. Now, go ahead and divide this, 12ax squared plus 6bx plus 2c by the y itself, which is quartic, you'll soon realize that this is actually not going to work. What's the problem? Houston, we have a problem. The problem is if you divide a quartic, uh, I mean a quadratic, by a quartic, you're not going to get a quadratic. It should be the other way around. Uh-oh. Does that mean if the problem was like this, then we would have a solution that with this method? Probably you can test it out, right? Because the numerator will have a higher degree, so it's possible to get a polynomial by division. Of course, it needs to be divisible by its second derivative. There are some requirements, so on and so forth. But with lots of coefficients, I think that can be achieved, right? Hopefully. I don't know. So this means y cannot be a polynomial. Well, that's what it means, right? Okay. Can it be logarithmic? I don't think so. Can it be a trigonometric? I don't think so. Can it be exponential? Probably not, but I haven't tested it. But with the second method, we're going to talk about something else. If you don't know what kind of function you're dealing with, let me go ahead and cross multiply first. If you multiply both sides by uh, y, and by the way, uh, you need to assume that y does not equal 0. And if y is equal to 0, you know that the original expression is undefined anyways, right? So y can't be 0, so it's okay to uh, multiply by y. So that's what I did, and now I'm thinking, if you don't know what type of function you're dealing with, how about this? A more general approach, use an infinite series, because an infinite polynomial can represent pretty much any function, right? Even our tangent x, which is not very nice, by the way, but it can be done thanks to Taylor and, what's the other guy's name? Maclaurin, right? I think, something like that. Anyways, that can be done. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write the y as an infinite polynomial, but this is different from a polynomial where you set the degree. Okay, remember the first method I said, okay, suppose it's a quartic polynomial. In this case, I say, what if this is an infinite polynomial, right? Something like this. And of course, at the end, oops, and I don't want to use a b here. I actually wanted to use a n, x to the n, a n minus 1 x uh, to the power n minus 1 plus a 1 x plus a sub 0. So I use the subscript, like powers, okay? And from here, we can basically try to do the following. Differentiate both sides. That's going to give you n, a sub n, x to the power n minus 1, plus a n minus 1 times n minus 1, times x to the power n minus 2, dot, dot, dot. With the first derivative, a 0 is a constant, so it's going to disappear, and we're going to end up with a sub 1. And when you differentiate this one more time, you're going to get something like n times n minus 1, a sub n, x to the power n minus 2, plus 
n minus 1 times n minus 2 times a sub n minus 1, x to the power n minus 3, and then dot, dot, dot. At the end, you're going to get, remember, before a sub 1, we had a sub 2 x squared, right? Here we had this term. When you differentiate it, that becomes 2a2x, and now it's going to be 2a2. That's going to be our constant uh, at the end. So it's important to figure out what the constant is going to look like from the first term to the last term so that you can kind of add them in a meaningful way, right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and plug this in to our expression. So we're going to set it equal to y, which is a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 dot 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 multiply these together and you're going to end up with something pretty interesting you know what's going to happen you're going to have something of degree n plus 2 which does not exist here if these are both infinite polynomials there is probably a way that they can be equal but some of the terms will have a zero coefficient makes sense but the rest is kind of messy and i haven't really i'm not in the mood to do it i'm going to leave it to you guys well is there an infinite polynomial solution to this that's for you to find out because i'm about to go to the third method and then talk about the third fourth one also share with you who shared this with me okay all right great so the third method is actually really cool you know why because we need to find something that'll give us a polynomial but the numerator is supposed to be of lower degree and that can happen with something like this Maybe a polynomial is not going to work, but e to the power f of x, some type of function. You know why? Let me tell you. When you differentiate this, you're going to get f prime times e to the power f from chain rule. And if you differentiate this one more time, let me just give it to you. Can I just say it? You're going to get e to the power f of x multiplied by f double prime of x plus f prime of x squared. Because, again, we use the product rule, the chain rule, and all the rules that apply. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and divide y double prime by y. That's going to cancel out some of the terms, leaving us with an easier differential equation. Well, hopefully, right? That's wishful thinking. Now, we're going to go ahead and divide this by y, which is e to the power f of x. And as you can see here, e to the power f of x cancels out. Super duper nice, right? Yay. Now, we ended up with something like this, but wait a minute. How are we going to solve it, right? Well, at least we know that this is equal to something, right? So here's what we have. f double prime of x plus f prime of x squared is equal to y double prime over y, which is 4x squared plus 4x plus 6. Awesome. Now, our goal is going to be to solve for f, obviously. But this is a nonlinear differential equation, a hard type, right? Don't worry. We're going to make some assumptions. Sorry. To simplify things a little bit here, we're going to say, can f be a polynomial? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Why not? <laughs> okay. So what kind of polynomial should we consider? Well, given the fact that we have to differentiate f once and square and then differentiate twice. Differentiating twice is going to lower the degree, so we don't really care. But we kind of need to focus on the degree of this f prime squared, and which needs to match up with a quadratic. So f prime needs to be linear, which means f needs to be quadratic. Does that make sense? If f is quadratic, its first derivative is going to be linear. And when you square it, it's going to be quadratic again. Yay. So f of x, I'm going to assume it can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c. Again, a, b, c are real numbers. They don't have to be the same numbers that we used before. That's perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and differentiate this once and twice. Once we'll get 2ax plus b. We have to do both because we need both. And now this is going to be just 2a. Let's go ahead and plug in everything into this equation. We don't need f. We only need f prime and f double prime. f double prime is 2a. f prime is 2ax plus b. We're supposed to square that because here we have f prime squared. And that is equal to 4x squared plus 4x plus 6. Now, is this going to give us a solution? Let's find out. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and expand this. This will become 4ax squared plus 4abx plus b squared. And then I'll have the plus 2a at the end as a constant. And now these are two polynomials that should equal for all values of x. In other words, the coefficients have to match up, which means 4a is supposed to be 4 and 4ab is supposed to be 4, which means a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 1. If b is equal to 1 and a is equal to 1, do we get a solution from here? Hmm. 
probably not, but you know what? I probably made a mistake. I don't know what it is, but I was hoping. You know what? Maybe I messed up and this is supposed to be a three. I apologize if that's the case. Let's just assume that this is a three. Of course, I kind of have to go back and change everything. And I'll try to make this change in the, what's it called? Thumbnail. Hopefully you'll forgive me and I'll put a note saying that the first part is incorrect. But thanks for watching so far and stick around. Now, in this case, A equals one, B equals one works because one plus two is equal to three. Houston, we have a solution, awesome. So this means that F of X, which we assumed would be written as AX squared plus BX plus C, can be written as X squared plus X plus C. I don't know what C is and I don't think it matters. I could be wrong, by the way, but you know what? We can do this, uh, we can check it out. But wait a minute, F is not the answer because my equation is supposed to be y equals e to the power f of x. So let's go ahead and do it. y equals e to the power x squared plus x plus c should be a solution for this differential equation. Is that really the case? Let's go ahead and check out our work. And this may or may not work. That's why we check it, okay? Now, let's see. So if you substitute, I mean differentiate this, you're going to get 2x plus 1 multiplied by e to the x squared plus x plus c. Differentiate this one more time. You're going to get the derivative of the first expression times the second and the derivative of the second times the first. So it's going to look like this. 2 times e to the power x squared plus x plus 3 plus derivative of that one. Okay. And this is going to be the derivative of this is going to be 2x plus 1 multiplied by e to the power x squared plus x plus 3 multiplied by 2x plus 1. So it's going to be 2x plus 1 squared. Get the idea? So basically, I'll be adding... Uh, this, uh, 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 plus 2, which is 3, multiply by e to the power x squared plus x plus, how did I change that c to a 3? I don't know. It's supposed to be a c, by the way. This is a c, not a 3. It doesn't matter, though. And now we're going to get this expression. By the way, this is f of x, so yes. Or, I'm sorry, it, this is y, and it works. So this solution seems to work, looks like it. Um, and let's talk about the fourth one. Okay. The fourth method, by the way, was suggested by one of my viewers. Thank you, tal one t one was a year ago because I made another problem like this one and I'll try to link it down below so you can watch that video too. And this brings us to the fourth method, which was suggested by uh, that user. And that is assuming that y is in the following form to find all solutions. Instead of assuming that it's going to be like e to the power of some function, how about a function times e to the power of another function to find all the solutions? I'd like you to give it a try and let me know how that goes because your solution is not going to be expressed as explicit as we want it to be, but I want you to try it because there's a surprise in it. But if you really want to know what that looks like, Go ahead and go back in time, find that video, and, you know, see for yourself. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI, Cyber Math. By the way, this happens to be a long video, but I don't really care because I don't think my viewers care. As long as we cover everything, there's no rush, right? Anyways. Take care and bye-bye.